Greetings, dear sister in Christ. This audio message goes out to a certain sister from Zambia by the name of uh, Rachel Abigail uh, Mushala Chizolo. Okay, I hope I'm really I'm sincerely hoping and praying that this message finds you. Okay, but moving forward, I mean I love you and all your sister in Christ, but I have some issues with you know some of your doctrines and you know as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're supposed to you know edify one another. So if we all retract, we be supposed to, you know, just straighten one another out, you know, but in a loving manner, okay? So anyways, um, moving forward, I'm going to try, since I know you're a busy lady and I don't believe in wasting the time of feather, fellow brothers and sisters or brother and sister in, in, the, in the faith or in Christ, Christ Jesus, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this at roughly 20 minutes, okay? So... And plus, I got a lot of ground to cover, so I'm gonna just get right down to it. I would first of all like to say that um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna quote scriptures, but you know, since you're a believer, I'm pretty sure you know the Bible well enough as to where I don't I won't have to hit you over the head with this. And by the way, my name is Gabriel, and I'm, and I'm from America, and my name means God is my strength. Okay, I have a couple other Bible names, but anyways, I'm gonna just move forward with this. Um, I would just like to say that, for starters, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ from Africa, but y'all have this tendency to preach lordship salvation, which means that, you know, you add works to, you know, what Christ has done for us, okay? For starters, you know, when we go to hell, we don't go to hell because we sin. As I heard one pastor say the other day, Adam and Eve weren't expelled out of the garden, or kicked out, or thrown out, uh, or um, I would say exposed to whatever out of the Garden of Eden. Because they sinned, they they did it. They God had uh had them cast out of the Garden of Eden because they refused to confess their sin and forsake it and stuff. You know they were blaming each other for why they sinned. Like you know Adam said, "Oh, it's this woman that you gave me and stuff." Okay, because people, you know, people don't go to hell necessarily because they sinned, and you did get it right because you know my late pastor was a prophet of God, by the way, and you know his name is Jim Laudermill, and you can. Look up his sermons on YouTube, but anyhow, and also look up William Branham because he was a prophet to the seventh church age. And you know, be sure to check out his sermons as well. He's also, you know, he's going on, he's a he was our, our brother in Christ as well. He died, you know, after Christmas Day of 1965, but before New Year's Day of 66 came, he died somewhere in that time frame of a car accident. You know, his time was up and God had tested, so God took him off the scene. But uh, anyways, um, I hope those sermons are a blessing to you. And I posted most of the sermons by Jim Laudermilk. And I got a bunch more, you know, to post to it. But anyways, I just hope it's worth your while. But back to the Lordship Salvation thing. Okay, this legal, legalism is, you know, when, you know, you you try to, you know, uh, get favor with God and gain salvation through works. And, you know, and man-made things. That are, aren't, you know, biblically based, okay, and just a bunch of nonsense. I know that lady that you were talking about that uh, you said believe in witchcraft, and you admit when you had traveled um, to a, uh, Kenya, I believe, for, a, you know, a revival or, or a conference or something like that. I know you were talking about Sister Musa, a Musa Ndiwa from South Africa, okay, and if I'm being honest with you, I think that she's a Nephilim, if I'm being honest. We, we call them clones because... There was a young man that was on YouTube a number of years ago. And by the way, his wife looks just like you. And so there was a young man by the name of Yahweh Rules. And, you know, I mirrored. I didn't capture a lot of his videos before YouTube took him down, took his channel down. Because, you know, out of all the truthers out there, the so-called truthers, and by the way, a lot of them are gatekeepers. In other words, as you said, a lot of times, you know, as far as the devil's mission, you know, the demons, you know, Satan, the demons, the fallen angels, and so their mission against us. You know, they'll give us some truth, you know, nuggets of truth. You know, they'll throw us little crumbs of truth. They're, they'll give us, you know, some truth, you know, partial truths or half truths, even mostly truths, but they don't give you the full truth. They're always going to throw something in there that's deceptive. They're also gatekeepers, double agents, and controlled opposition, okay? Because I know there's a lot of so-called truthers over on YouTube, for example, YouTube, by the way, is full of robot toys and clones and, and nephilims and demons in, in human form, demon incarnates or demons in human disguise, pretending to be, you know, human beings, and created in God's image when they're not, okay, there was a young man by the name of Yahweh Rules, that God took, I mean, the, I'm sorry, that the that YouTube had taken off, because he smoked too much truth, okay, he talked about these creatures, he just called them clones, or whatever, 
And by the way, you can tell at times I'm going to have to disagree about you not being able to, uh, although that is true, because a lot of folks, you know, went over to the other extreme. They thought, you know, a way to tell somebody was cloned is that they were real plastic looking, but that's not always true because I know, I mean, it's easy to tell when you go on the internet or whatever, uh, or look, in the, look at, you know, see the mainstream mass media. It's especially bad over here in America, by the way. And by the way, uh, a lot of people are trying to come over here. And the thing I can't help but notice that living in other countries, especially they're more impoverished and have less freedoms or whatever. And the thing I can't help but notice is when a lot of those people come over here, that their lives get worse and that either them or their loved ones get murdered. OK, or have some other horrible crimes committed against them because they got out of the will of God and stuff. Why would you want to come to a country just to have your morals corrupted or to end up in hell or, or, or whatever? OK, I mean, America is in the bee's knees and trust me, you know, I hope that, you know, you do a message about this someday that if people are going to come to America or any of these other Western English speaking, you know, white dominated countries that they need to seek the will of God for. And this is mainly for, you know, those that are coming into the kingdom and you seek the will of God first before trying to come over here. Because, as I said earlier, and like I said before. Uh, their lives get worse when they come over here. I know of people that came over to America and their daughters got raped and murdered or ended up in domestic violence relationships and marriages where the man ended up killing them and stuff like that. So I done also, I'm going to give you a link to my channel, but you don't have to watch all the videos, just, you know, the audio messages and stuff because, you know, uh, the videos I did in times past dealt with worldly celebrities. And I still do that to this very day, but it's mainly the audio. You can just feel free to take a look at or listen to the, the audio messages that I do because I don't have time to get into everything um, because get into everything that, you know, I, I that I talk about and discuss because I cover all of my bases. A lot of people leave truths, important truths out or they just ignorant and don't know what's going on. A lot of people, when they speak truth, they leave things out either because they're ignorant or they're one of those agents of darkness that, you know, they, they tell you as I said earlier, like I said before, they tell you partial truths, half truths, and sometimes occasionally, on rare occasions, mostly truths, but they don't tell you the whole truth and nothing but, but I always tell people, I have a friend that, that, that you know, he's, he's a brother in Christ, if I'm being honest, uh, he's a brother in Christ, and I've been witnessing and evangelizing him, and you know, since, I wouldn't say he's my doctor or therapist per se, but you know, he works somewhere in that field, and you know, I've been witnessing him for the past 10 years. I only see him like once or twice a month. So, you know, I try to, you know, tell him as much. I told him about you as well, because it's more important than ever for us that are part of the body of Christ. I'm talking about for those of us that sincerely belong to God, you know, to stick together and, and be unified because I know that persecution is coming. But, you know, and another, speaking of which, another area that, you know, I disagree with you about is I'm not trying to find fault or anything. I'm just doing this in love because, you know, when we see a brother or sister in Christ get all track, we're supposed to correct them and edify them, but in love. OK, and by the way, I'm, a, I'm in a just in case you're wondering where I'm from. I'm from America. I'm from the southern region. You know, as you can tell by my accent and, you know, I'm also uh, a black lady that's from the United States, you know, southeastern United States. OK. And by the way, you're a beautiful young lady and, you know, I love your outfits that you wear. You always, I know she never wear the same outfit um, twice. And your husband is handsome as well. Your husband Conrad. But I know I'm not listening, okay? Because I know God got somebody for me and I believe he's going to be from Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm not sure what country in Africa that he's going to be from. But, you know, uh, you know, I had dreams and stuff that and God revealed to me that, you know, I would be, be a missionary down there and, you know, I would go, I would travel there from time to time. You know, to witness to those people because Lord knows here in the United States, you can't hardly get anybody to listen to the gospel, okay? Everybody wants to come here, but, you know, it's not always cracked up to be. And when I see the agendas that are being pushed hard over here, you know, like the LGBT thing, the sodomite thing and stuff like that, and other things that are abominable, evil, wicked, you know, perverted sex and, you know, pornographic stuff, you don't want to believe me. I just, I mean, this message isn't for, you know, this particular part of the message about immigrating to, uh, migrating to America isn't for you. It's for, you know, somebody else that you might cancel. Tell them, believe me, you do not want to come over here. If you want to make heaven, if you want to, you know, have a strong relationship with God, it'll be better because, you know, we have brothers and sisters in Christ that live in third world countries and stuff. 
And I know their, their relationship with God is stronger than those of us that are in more prosperous countries because these people, they have to depend on God because, and even in some of these places like North Korea, you know, there's there's persecution, there's intense persecution. You know, because these people don't know when, you know, the government is going to, you know, bust their door down and come in and drag them off to prison or even kill them. OK, and I want you to know that our brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, the worst place to be a true believer is, is in North Korea. OK, you know, they even locked. I know a lot of believers, you know, we, we those of us that live in countries where there's more freedom and stuff. We tend to gloss over this while our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through in countries and parts of Africa, Asia and the Middle East. OK, we tend to gloss over it, not believing that God will allow things like this. But in North Korea, we, we even have brothers and sisters in Christ over there. They're locked up in concentration camps or gulags, as they call, them, you know, in Russia. And they suffer intensely. You know, they, they're not fed. A lot of times they're beat up or starved or, or whatever. And they live in, you know, horrible, deplorable conditions. But, you know, they in situations like that, they got enough of a revelation to know that, you know, they're. They, they, that suffering is a part of the game and they know that, you know, God got far better waiting for them, even if they're not delivered from that in this life, they know that someday their suffering is going to come to an end. So they don't try to fight it or deny their faith or whatever. And they have to depend on God. Okay. Cause there's, there's also a lot of poverty in that country. And you know, those people don't hardly, you know, get proper food, but they say, yeah, we, our bodies, our physical and, and natural bodies need food, but our spiritual and supernatural beings, we need the word of God and the presence of God even more. Okay, so and they they don't and plus you know they they also have to depend on God for healing because in a lot of those parts of Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, you know where it's more poverty and less freedoms and stuff, they they have to depend on God for healing and health and you know for you know every day from day to day life and that's one of the most important aspects of following God. By the way, and about the Nephilim, we call them clones. OK, and I know that, you know, you never said it about how they came about, but, you know, I'm just here to tell you that clones come about either through because a lot of them are made in cloning facilities, either, you know, in those deep underground military bases or cities of underground cities. That only the clones themselves have access to. OK, and only demons have access to it. this stuff is open to real humans. OK, because devil really. As I heard you say, you know, the, the devil really hates us, okay? Those of us that are created in the image of God, myself included, okay? Because although I don't go by these silly, idiotic titles, you know, God has, you know, raised me up to be a, a dreamer and to speak truth, a, a prophetess, so to speak, okay? So me fooled by my heavy voice. I had to get into it some other time, you know, why I have a heavy voice. But anyways, I can't help that. And I've been teased about it for much of my life. And also, speaking of which, I've also been hated for mo much of my life. And even before I was born, I see how the devil tried to stop me from getting here. Okay? And he mainly uh, uh, went after my mother because my mother was a woman just like he went out to Eve in the Garden of Eden. And, you know, uh, I hate to, to bust your bubble, but not everybody has chosen to follow God. And, you know, the thing you leave out is that we have to have a new birth. You have to have a a total spiritual new birth as, you know, William Branham and my late pastor who basically pick, picked up where he left off when he died in uh, near the end of 1965. And by the way, you know, my late pastor died back in his name is Jim Louder Milk, by the way. OK, Louder, like something is louder and then milk, like milk, like you give to a baby. OK, so that's his name. And, you know, he passed on back in November of 1999 from uh, cancer. So he done gone on now. He, he, he left before the year 2000 came in. But anyways, uh, he said that the, the why it involves a new birth, by the way, this is in the Bible, because the Bible says, you know, though those that are born of God cannot commit sin for his seed remaining in him. So in order to get saved, OK, I do believe in once saved, always saved. OK, because if you got the seed of God in you, that's a guarantee that you're going to make it into God's kingdom. It's not all these works and stuff like that, because you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, you still die, go to hell, because when we come into the world, all of us, they're real humans, by the way, the, the demon incarnates don't apply because they're not human. OK, how human they look, they're not human at all because they don't have a spirit and a soul. OK, because we as human beings, we're made of three nature beings. By the way, God, you know, has spoke to me. He's been dealing with me quite some time to, to, to uh, get, get these messages out to you because there's coming a day when the government is going to pre prevent this. OK, so. 
Um, I'm gonna have to do multiple parts through this video. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, this, these audio messages because I don't have time to squeeze everything in within 20 minutes. But uh, anyways, it's come to time when even you prophesied this. But so, you know, we're a three-natured being. And demons don't have this. It's just a physical body and, you know, demonic entities that enter into them and control them and stuff and influence real humans and lie to real humans so they get them sent to hell. Influence them to sin, as you put it. And the God, the God named Yahweh rules, he said, you know, to lie to real humans and get them sent to hell. So, uh, anyways, um, we are three nature being, we as real humans. So, you know, when I look at you, I see your physical body, but on the inside of your body, that's just the part, the natural part I can see with my natural eye. But on the inside, you have a spirit and also a soul. A, the soul is the real you, okay? It goes to heaven or hell after you die, depending on whether you were saved or lost, okay? So... Uh, uh, when what happens in the new birth is what happens when we were born, basically, is that an angel of the Lord, that's why a woman, and you could probably test to this yourself since, you know, you've given birth before, you know, you have a son. So well, around the time when a woman is about to give birth and stuff, you know, she she gets real calm and, you know, just serene, like my older sister did, you know, you know, she was cloned by that time, and also the child she had and the, the, her baby's father, because she had an illegitimate bastard child at the age of 16, by the way. So, you know, they real calm, and this is because the angel, for the real babies, by the way, that's the angel of the Lord, had hovering nearby, about to put the soul into the baby. The child already has a spirit that happened, that conception, but at birth, you know, the both of the parents are real, like the case of my parents, and their parents before that, and before that, or whatever. You know, the angel of the Lord puts a spirit, I mean, puts the soul inside the child's body, but people that... Or, or predestinated, by the way, you check this out in the first book of Ephesians, the first chapter of Ephesians, if, you know, you have doubts about God choosing us before the world even begun, so when it comes to matters of getting saved, it's not that what we did, but it's what he did for us, and in short, you know, we do good works to live a life of holiness, godliness, and righteousness, because, you know, uh, uh, we're, we are saved, we don't do those works to get saved, we do that to, to because we're saved, okay, that's the fruits that we produce, uh, as, you know, saved people and being conformed, you know, the journey to get conformed into the image of Christ being transferred, you know, being transformed into the stature of a perfect man, a perfect and mature, you know, being spiritual uh, and supernatural beings, by the way, on our journeys to heaven. But anyways, but people that have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, or not the Book of Life, now there's a difference between the two that's going to be pulled out at a great white throne judgment, but we go to the judgment seat of Christ, and so our names are written, in, if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life at birth, you know, God puts a seed inside of your soul, okay? So eventually, you're going to have the new birth. That's inevitable, okay? Somebody said, well, I don't believe that God will force it. I don't see it that way. Because God planned this out before the foundation. Everything that happens in this world, he's in perfect control. I just want you to know that, okay? But anyways, um, we have a soul and a, and a spirit and a physical body, okay? And Christ is the same way. we got... God the Father, you know, Jesus Christ the Son, which is God in human flesh, and we got the soul of God, which is the Logos, as they call it in the Greek language, but anyway, so so we were real, real humans, that's how we're created, okay, we have a soul, if you're, if you're born again lady, that means you got the seed of God in you, okay, and about you living a life of holiness, righteousness, and godliness. And by the way, we can't do this in our own strength. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to help us along in this area. Okay? We need God's help. We can't do this so I, We can't do this in the flesh. Because the Bible says it's impossible to please God in the flesh. Okay? So this is, this is what living by the Spirit means. We depend on the Holy Spirit to help us live a godly, holiness, and, and, and righteous life. Okay? We, you know, yeah, you say a sinner's prayer, but it's more to it than that. But anyway, about the coming persecution, by the way, another area I disagree with you in is we're not going to be down here for the tribulation period, okay? You don't need to, we don't need to be, because we prove our love for God down here. We defeat Satan now. We don't defeat him in the afterlife or, you know, in the tribulation period. We defeat him now, okay? So this is running short, so I'm going to have to do another part to this. But anyways, about the coming persecution, if you disagree with me about this, all I got to say is, you still disagree all I got to say is, you know, you need to study the word. And God has revealed to me through dreams and stuff. And also in his word that we're not going to be down here for that time. But we are going to have to endure persecution before we leave here. I'm going to add another five minutes to this message because I have a lot to say. But we we are going to, you even seen it in, a, in I had dreams about this. They're going to put us in jail and everything. 
you know, since the internet, so we can't get the truth out and stuff like that. And by the way, another thing y'all left out, you know, when it comes to modest apparel and, you know, dressing in, you know, godly, you know, modest and holy and righteous apparel, that women, I know because we're black, we don't often talk about this because, you know, we got this curse on us, we can't grow our hair long. By the way, black women used to have very, very long, our hair used to grow, be longer and thicker than any other race of women. And you're probably wondering why it happened. All you have to do is uh, read the Bible, you know, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's in your Bible why black people have been suffering for all these years because we were here first and we were the chosen race, by the way. And that's why all these years we've been made to feel inferior. Our hair is ugly. Our dark skin is up. All of that is false because, by the way, the man that saved you, who is Jesus Christ, he's a black man. He's very dark skin. He's an African, basically. Okay. They, they, I mean, all those, if you got any of those images, those false images of a white Jesus, then you need to throw them out. That's, that came from Roman Catholicism, which is a false uh, religion. It's a worldwide cult. And another thing, you, a lot of you African Christians, y'all need to come out of those. You need to tell people to come out of those denominations because that, that's going into the mark of the beast, okay? And tell women not to cut their hair because God, why the head covering, it didn't mean put a scarf. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that or whatever. But a lot of people misinterpret that scripture because actually that scripture about head covering, your, your covering is your hair actually, okay? Because women are not supposed to cut their hair like men because God intended for there to be a difference between the hair of men and the hair of women. And I told this brother everything that I'm telling you. I told this brother in Christ that and I also met another young man in his early 20s. And I believe he's one of us as well. He's a real person. Or I wouldn't be witnessing him. And God led me through very unusual and adverse situations to this young man. Okay. So, and he's in his early 20s and about to get married. And, you know, he's very sweet and stuff. And mild-mannered like this doctor I told you. So-called, he doesn't like me calling that, him that because he's not a doctor. But, you know, I kind of nicknamed him that. Okay. I'm telling him everything because I have no agenda because God has... Except to speak truth, this is about money, this isn't about, you know, fame or popularity, because that means absolutely nothing to me, okay? I mean, did years ago when I didn't know the truth or anything, and I wasn't into this thing, but it means nothing to me. If I could just make heaven, that's all that, that's all God's people should be worried about, okay? I mean, the things of this world, or you very well know, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that passage about not loving the world and the world passing away, and, you know, the only important thing is pleasing God and doing His will on this earth. Because it's what God places us down here, you know, to do, to be tempted, tested, and try. And then when our time is up, you know, we go back home to heaven. Because it's our home. And by the way, we, we, before we came to earth, we was in heaven, by the way. So if you're chosen by God, that means you was in heaven. So you didn't do anything to earn salvation. The Bible says salvation is an unmerited gift from God. Okay, you don't have to do all these works to be saved. You do what, you do good works because you're saved, not to be saved. I just want to emphasize that. I'm not saying that. Uh, it's like y'all think God is retarded or something. If you, it, I may have to extend this to 30 minutes, but if you, uh, but let me continue. But if you, um, and you have to forgive me because I'm not the best orator and stuff, but you know, um, like Moses, you know, I'm not the best orator, but you know, um, I'm just, I just want you to, we're supposed to uplift each other and educate each other. And the more mature believers are to educate the less mature ones, you know, to bring them, you know, to help you know, do God's will and, you know, advancing us towards, you know, coming to the stature of a, per and mature, a perfect and mature man being conformed to the image of Christ. I'm speaking of the inner man right now. The man in the control tower, as my late pastor called it, because this outer, this outer, this inner man has to bring the outer man under subjection, as you very well know. Okay, so... Um, and one of the ways we mature in the faith, yes, yeah, through suffering, going through trials, and so on and so forth, but it's also... You know, another way we mature is that when God gives us revelations about certain things, especially about evil, how evil things are and things being wrong, because this is how I know I belong to God. OK, this is how, you know, someone belongs to God. For one thing, you know, I've been hated all my life, even by my own. I've been rejected by even my own family. OK, even back, you know, when I was a child, you know, I experienced problems with and looking back on, I realized, you know, they were demon incarnates. It's not a person that does you wrong. is a real human, as you very well know. And by the way, they're also going to be judged at the great white throne judgment. Every sinner, not only every person that died without Christ, but also Satan, demons, and the fallen. It's in your Bible because the Bible says even the bride of Christ. It's not going to be just Jesus there doing the judging. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he hands out the sentence. He's actually the judge. And we as the bride of Jesus Christ, we're the jury, the part of the body, because we're a part of him. So everything that, you know, we say or do on that day to people that, 
we're judging, you know, it's going to be in line with what Jesus would do. Okay. So anyhow, uh, uh, we're part of, so if you're part of bride of Christ, that means you was in heaven before you came to this earth. God just put you down here to do his will and, and work for him and to be tempted, tested and try. And then once your time is up, whether it's by means of death or the rapture, then you go back home to heaven because that's where we were. Because a lot of things, even when I was small, you know, I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit dealing with me or that seed that's inside of me, you know, that, that seed of God that's inside of me, you know, just letting me know, say, hey, I'm here. Look at here. Look at here. I'm here. But I believe it went both ways. I believe it's a combination of both, basically. But even back then, you know, I instinctively knew that certain things were sins, like women cutting their hair off like tomboys and stuff and wearing tight pants. I, I mean, it's like something in me that automatically and instinctively, I'm talking about God-given instincts, and I'm talking about pseudoscience, instincts that, you know, leave God out of the picture. I'm talking about instincts that the Holy Spirit and, or, you know, or God put place within us, you know, about the sense of the difference between right and wrong, you know, our conscience, which is a God-given instrument that differentiate, that causes, that helps us to differentiate between or discern or be wise to what's right, the difference between right and wrong. Okay, we even had this. I even knew, I instinctively knew that certain things were were wrong. And by the way, another thing y'all failed to mention is the fact that celebrities in Hollywood are transgender. Okay, the men are women, and the women are men. But I'm mainly dealing with the ones that are pretending to be women. Okay, though, and the the ones that women, even women that claim they following God, are treat real women. By the way. You know, common, kind of ordinary, everyday, working class citizens, women, you know, females and stuff, girls and women, they are imitating. I want you to know that they're imitating transvestites. Why do you think they promote makeup and artificial beauty, false hair? You know, those long, fake doo-doo nails. Yes, yes, I call them that because that's what they are because I don't know how they, you know, wipe themselves when they go to the bathroom wearing nails that are like several inches long. And that stuff just looks creepy and demonic, by the way. It's also unsanitary and unhygienic, Okay. They're in, little, they know they're imitating men in drag, basically. But those are not women in Hollywood at all. Dot com, period. And by the way, the makeup and stuff that they wear and all this artificial beauty, false hair, false eyelashes, you know, gallons of makeup and all this kind of stuff, you know, tight clothes. That stuff is for prostitutes and transvestites, by the way. I just want you to know that it's not for us real women. God already endowed us with natural beauty. We don't need all that junk to, to, to be somebody. I know that a lot of times these Jezebels out in the world... Not only they're imitating, you know, trannies and, and, and women and men in drag, but they're they're also they also have a tendency when they wear those all of that mess that they think they're better than women, especially us Christian women that that don't wear that stuff by choice. By the way, they they tend to have a spirit of pride on them. But you know, we'll see who the jokes on in the end when this thing is over. I mean, like the saying, like I heard one old fashioned pastor, he passed on almost 40 years ago. Now he's in heaven. He's our brother in Christ. And by the way, check out B.R. Lakin's sermons. His name is B.R. Lakin. He became, he came from West Virginia. He died in 1984. He's born in 1901. But anyways, he said, you know, part of the journey of being conformed to the image, I may have to extend this another to 35 minutes. He said, you know, he lived a life of holiness for so long that he can't go out back out and sin. You know, he's been spoiled from living a life of sin. And when he's out, you know, he's not unfaithful to his wife because when he gets home, he wants to be able to look his wife in the eye. OK, and know that he's been faithful. He's been true to her while he's out traveling, you know, doing the work of God and stuff, doing revivals, preaching and things of that nature, winning people to Christ and so on and so forth, etc., etc. But uh, anyways, Please let the women know that the celebrities that they're imitating in Hollywood are not real women and also not human. They're, they're demons in human bodies. I mean, demons in human form. I don't even think their bodies are real, as you had kind of casually mentioned in times past. And by the way, you know, the rituals they do around on Valentine's Day, you know, that only touches the tip of the iceberg of the the rituals that the elite, those in elite circles do. You know, they sacrifice babies, you know. They, you get sodomized and raped and stuff like that. You especially get bad if you're a woman, because Satan especially hates women. And by the way, hatred of women is anti-Christ spirit. And also the trannies, the tranny demons and the clone trannies in Hollywood are telling women, you know, to go around half naked because they're setting them up to be sexually assaulted or being kidnapped and sold into uh, sex trafficking and sex slavery and stuff. So they really don't care about us and to get us sent to hell. Because as I heard that old fashioned pastor say, Today, Jesus is your savior, but that's, that's why we on earth. But when you die and go to hell or whatever at a great white throne judgment, he's going to be your judge. Okay. Right now he's your savior, 
but tomorrow today's your savior, but tomorrow he's your, he's going to be your judge to sum things up. Okay. And by the way, the coming, the, the purpose of the coming, I heard videos about it, but it, you know, but, but I just turn them off after a few minutes because the ones that were talking about this subject, they clearly didn't want to, they clearly didn't know what they were talking about. And by the way, also check out, uh, I'm going to give you some links and stuff. Also check out, uh, David Wilkerson's, um, episodes of the vision or sermons of the vision because he's telling the things that are to come in this world okay about like about the persecution madness because it's coming a time when the governments of the world of course satan is going to be behind it of course and you know god is although satan means it for our harm god is going to turn it out for our good and by the way it's coming a time when the governments of the world it's like you know this pandemic affect the whole world and sadly that's only the beginning but we ain't got too much time left down here anyways but what I'm trying to say is, it's coming to town. The governments of the world are going to get together and come against the bride of Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, we're in the minority, but, you know, we got Jesus in us to the Bible. Like the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because if God be for you, then who can be against you? Because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because greater is he is within you than he is within the world. Okay? I'm also going to give you a link, you know, to... A brief commentary by my late pastor, you know, as a snippet, you know, a part of a clip of his sermon is that talks about that time is coming. And I'm seeing, although he preached his sermon way back in 92, uh, 1992, I can see a lot of those events folding, unfolding down here in this day. And, you know, and since he's lucky that he passed on before all this madness, like 20 years before all this madness hit, that hit the world. But, you know, God has also given me a revelation he, he showed me through multiple dreams that, you know, I'm going to be alive and remaining uh, uh, when he comes back. And also, uh, they, they, you know, the coming persecution, you know, they're going to put us in jail. They're going to stop us from preaching. And we even will have to go into seclusion because, you know, I, I, it's got so now I don't have way like going out in public because people are in such sin and stuff like that. And from time to time, you know, these these demons out here, they're aware that, you know, that they pretend to be human and they really hate that. And from time to time, you know, they, they like to attack us because, you know, they, they, they upset that God is because the devil does not like being exposed. Sister Rachel, I'm telling you, it's like kryptonite to Satan, the demons, devils and fallen imps, minions and fallen angels. By the way, it's kryptonite for them to be exposed. And so you are, you hit it right on the nail. So, uh, anyways, I also have family members in my family that are also clones. Like, they were born real people, but at some point, this is another thing, heaven, hell, testimonies leave out. That, you know, that person got their soul snatched and taken to hell at some point. Like, for example, you know, four people I grew up with, my parents and two of my sisters, and two sisters, they're all clones now. They were born, all born real people, but they're clones now. They're all of them. I'm the only one left that's a real person. And of course, you know, they persecute me, and, so, and you're probably wondering... They, they persecuted me. I don't have time to get into the whole thing, but, you know, I have a, sh a story to share about cloning, you know, my personal story. But, you know, I won't get into it because, you know, this is, I don't want this to be too long, long-winded. But <clears throat> anyways, uh, what you got to understand is uh, the coming persecution, the, the, the purpose of it is to unify the bride and also, you know, bring us closer together, not with the world anyway. But we need we need we need to unite with each other because it's coming a day when we gonna live in heaven. We're gonna live in heaven with each other forever. So, you know, if we're gonna li live together forever in heaven, then we have to learn how to live to get along with each other down here. It's, all, it's to unify us. And it's also to purify us. As God is not Jesus is not coming back for a dirty and divided bride. He's coming back for a unified and purified one. Basically, to sum things up. And plus, you know, that persecution is gonna cause us to grow. Uh, 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 spiritually and supernaturally by leaps and bounds, okay? And, and the Bible says, as you very well know, uh, uh, that Jesus is coming back for a bride that's without fault, flaw, uh, uh, spot, blemish, or wrinkle in our, in our, uh, uh, in our, uh, you know, spiritually, okay? Morally and spiritually. But that, 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 that persecution is meant to purge out any love for the world that we have and force us to depend on completely and totally on God. Okay. Cause that's a journey. Depending on God is a journey, by the way, because as we mature and become more like Jesus and stuff in the faith and, you know, morally and spiritually, you know, we become more conformed to his image and become more like Jesus. We, we depend more and more on him and his spirit, you know, to help us navigate the mind, this mind field called this earthly life. And it also, defeat and be victorious, overcome the world, flesh, the flesh and the devil, okay, 
So I'm going to have to send this another five minutes because I just have a lot to say. Okay? And I hope this is a blessing to you. And I hope you learn, learn something new from this. Okay? But moving on forward. But the coming persecution, you know, my late pastor said he's he not worried about it because if you got Jesus living in, like when you have a new birth, you literally got the spirit of God living in you. And what happens is when, you, when you're born again, by the way, and, and like one of the apostles or disciples asked Jesus, can I go back in my mother's and be born? But Jesus wasn't speaking of a physical birth. We don't already had that. He's talking of the spiritual new birth. Okay. What happens is at the new birth is, is more than saying a sinner's prayer or getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As, as I told you earlier, like I said before in this message, you can have that every day of your life and go to hell. What's going to have to happen is for a person to really truly come into the kingdom and permanently, by the way, they're going to have to be born again. And what happens in the new birth, and I know my late pastor and uh, 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 William Branham, they were the only ones that really broke this thing down. Everybody just, nobody really fully explained this. So what happens in the new birth is, you know, you have to see, you have to add, first of all, you have to have the seed of God and have to, to get your soul saved. You have to be a real human. This is, this doesn't apply to demon incarnates at all, dot com, period, because they can't be saved, okay? And a lot of Christians sometimes overlook this fact. So they're out here trying to, when a evil, wicked, demon incarnate husband or wife to Jesus or their children that are not human, that they made a mistake of, you know, sleeping with a demon and the child came out a clone, okay? So they, they're they never coming in. I hate to bust anybody's bubble and rain on anybody's parade or be a wet blanket of rain over, over your parade, but I got to tell you the truth. So anyways, what? let me get down to the, the, the I mean, let, me, let, me get, let me get to the point. Get right straight to the point. So what happens in the new birth is, Though when the Holy Spirit falls, it, it destroys the old soul and the spirit it dies. So when you're born, all of us real humans are born. We're given what's called a permissive spirit and soul, but it's of the world. It's a simple, uh, uh, you know, the Bible says we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and came into the world speaking lies. Okay, we're all born sinners. So for those that reach the age of accountability in order to make heaven, you have to have a new birth. You go to you, you in order to make this bride of Jesus Christ and make the rapture or go to heaven when you die. You have to have a new birth because you can't you can't go to heaven with this old sinful soul and spirit in us. We it has to be destroyed because so the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a consuming fire. So when the fires of the Holy Spirit fall, it burns out the old soul and spirit. But at the same time, the seed is within you. And by the way, not all real humans have this seed. Only a select few have it. Okay. So, because I believe when the rapture takes place, and only 5% of the world's population is going to disappear because there's so few people that are really following God, okay? Because they, they had omitted this from the Bible, but you have to look this up in the Apocrypha. But there were many also by the way the Bible has been altered, okay? A lot of things were omitted. A lot of things were added to the Bible. Of course, near the end of the book of Revelations, they... They are uh, the Bible. God warns about what happens to those who add and take from His Word, and that's what the Catholic Church has done. Because those Bibles we have today, I'm not saying I'm not trying to discredit the Bible in any way. But I'm talking about the physical Bibles, but the whole entire Word is in heaven, by the way. Okay, but uh, I don't have time to get into. It. I have to get into that some other time. But back to the new birth, you must have this if you're going to make heaven when you die, or you know, be raptured out of here one of these days. So what happens, the fires of the Holy Spirit falls and it burns out the old soul and spirit that, you know, was given to us at birth, okay? The simple soul and spirit, okay? Because no sin is going to enter heaven, as you very well know, because God made that clear in his word. Make no mistake about it, okay? So it burns out the old soul, but the seed that's within you is quickened all of a sudden. And, you know, you had the desires of God in you, and from that day forward, you live for God. And somebody said, what happens if... You know, I may have increased this to 45 minutes, but anyhow, I'm trying to make a point. Somebody said, what happens if you get saved and, you know, you you sin against God? Okay, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you. Okay, because another way I also meant to bring this up, you know, to, 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 to mention this to you. Another way I, I, I know I belong to God is because when I do wrong and get off the right track, God rebukes and chastises me. Okay, God is not, I just want you to know, God is not retarded. If you truly belong to God... And you go out in sin, you know, God is going to, at some point, and I know this by personal experience, your life becomes, you don't go to hell, of course, because you say, because God said, you know, I can keep, he can keep what's been committed unto him, unto that day. And when you hear people out here say, well, uh, I used to be saved, but now I'm back out. There, there's no such thing. That person never had a seed of God. They never got born again to start with. 
Okay, they just got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you remember the part in the Bible about how, you know, a demon, Jesus cast demons out of a person and stuff like that. And then the demons come back, find the house swept and garnished. But, you know, that person, it, the, the vessel is empty. In other words, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. Then they get seven other spirits that are more wicked than they are. And they enter in, back into that person. And, you know, they the state of that, the first, the last state of that person is worse than the first. Okay. That's what happens when a person, you know, they get demons cast out or they get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but not the actual new birth. They become demon possessed and then they, they are worse off than they were before. That's why I'm talking about when it's important when you get demons cast out of you, you also have to have the new birth. Okay. You have to the, the, have the, so the, the fires of the Holy Spirit at, you know, or, at an ordained or chosen time or elected time of that person's life, you know, on God's timetable. God has an appointed time for that person to be born again. So the fires of the Holy Spirit fall and it destroys the old soul and spirit and simultaneously the seed that's within them. This is spiritual, by the way. It's not something you can see with your natural eye, but spiritually and supernaturally, that, that seed is quick and it comes to life. Okay? And that person, that new soul and spirit comes to life, but it's of God. Okay? So once you're saved, you're always saved. Okay? Because once that seed comes to life, okay, that spirit and that soul is of God, okay? Of course, you're going to still be able to make your own decisions and you know, have a mind of your own, but see, the thing is, Jesus now lives in you, okay? That soul and spirit is of God, so if that's the case, you can never more die and go to hell than God could die and go to hell. So you don't have to keep doing all these, yeah, yeah, live for God, do by all means, dress modestly, you know, do good deeds and, you know, do the will of God for your life. That, that, because the Bible says being saved and being saved by grace, we're saved by grace, not works, okay? The Bible makes that very clear. And another issue I have with you is that with your doctrine is, not with you personally, but with your doctrine is, you leave out the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? Because the Bible says without the blood of Jesus Christ, then there's no remission of sins. That's the only thing that can wash away our sins and stuff, not doing all these good works and, you know, just saying a sinner's prayer. Okay, the, the blood of Jesus had to wash away and cover up your sins. It's like, ironically, blood is red, but the blood of Jesus acts as bleach and it makes you whiter than snow. Okay, you have to have a new birth and have your sins washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And also, you, you God, Jesus has to put his robe of righteousness, godliness and holiness, God, godliness, holiness and righteousness on you because we need Jesus' righteousness to make it to heaven. This is not something we can do on our own. We can't atone or cover up our, or do away with our own sins. Okay? Jesus had to do, but we had to, ask, of course, we got to ask him to do that. But when we have, we, you got to have a new birth for us, first and foremost. Have your sins covered by the blood of Jesus so they won't be used against you anymore at the judgment. And, you know, and you have to have his righteousness on you. Because we can't get to heaven by our right. But the Bible says our righteousness are as filthy rags. And, and as I as also, as I have, like I told you earlier in this message, we can't atone for our own sins. Only Jesus can do that work for us. So it's not what you did to be saved. So if you were in heaven before you got here, then, you know, that's where God asked Job when he was going through the biggest trial of his life. He said, where were you when I, the foundations of the earth is, were lame. Actually, this is a rhetorical, open-ended question, but he's leaving Job to figure it out because what, what I'm trying to say is, as I told you, and like I said earlier in this message, we were in heaven before we came to this earth. God just put us here to be tempted, tested, and tried. And when you know our time is up down here at the point in time, we go back home to heaven, whether it's by means of death or through the rapture. Okay? So anyways, when that rapture happened, also, I'm going to extend this to 50 minutes, but when you get saved, when you get born again, you have a new soul and a spirit. You're born. That's why the new birth is being saved, salvation, having a new birth, uh, 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 being born again. You have the change of the soul, okay? Your soul, your old soul has to be destroyed, okay? And God has to bring the seed in you, but you got to have a seed in you and to have a, your soul saved. You got to have a soul. In other words, you got to be a real human, create the image of God, or this is just not happening. And, and even... If you're a real human, if you don't have a seed, you're not going to make the rapture or go to heaven when you die. Just, I have to get into that. Uh, another, I'm not putting everybody in hell that, uh, uh, because the Bible says, talk, Bible talks about the book of life, how that's going to be brought up at the great right throne judgment. But I have to cover this in a separate message about the difference, differences between the book of life and the Lamb's book of life. Lamb's book of life is those that belong to Jesus or that part of the body of Christ. 
because we were partying from all eternity. Okay, so we did nothing to merit eternal life because we were in heaven. We were having joy. That question that the answer to that question that God asked Job, we was in heaven and we were having joy with the heavenly father. And we were shouting when we saw God lay the foundations of the world and of the earth and stuff because we knew we would be victorious over the world of flesh and death. We weren't worried or we weren't wondering because the Bible says now when you get that new birth according to the word of God. Now we have eternal life. We ain't got to wait till the end of this life. To, to know whether or not you're saved and you ain't got to keep doing these works to keep your name. Your name is already in that book. And your name, your name if your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, that name can't be blotted out. Okay, it's written in permanent marker, written in permanent marker, so to speak, as it were. And, uh, uh, but on the other hand, those names on the Book of Life, they can be blotted out. It's written in, I like to think of it as being metaphorically or figuratively. You know, uh, and proverbially, is being written in in in, in a washable marker. You can you can wipe that off. You can blot those names off. Okay, according to the Book of Revelations, uh, a revelation that some people some people call it revelations. They use a plural, but it doesn't matter either way to me. But in the Book of Revelation, uh, they say the Bible says at a great white throne judgment, if your name isn't found in the Book of Life, then you're gonna be cast into the lake of fire. But I have to get into that. Like I said, I'm going to have to get into what happens to the foolish virgins. But for those of us in, in, at the judgment, okay, and during the tribulation, they're going to be here during the tribulation period. That's the tribulation saints that the word, that the, the book of Revelation is referred to. Okay, it's not us as true believers. The Bible says, the Bible differentiates between, because there's a lot of dualities in the Bible, okay? A lot of, you know, ends, you know, opposites in the Bible, okay? Okay, so... You know, remember the parable of the ten virgins, five were wise, those who were truly born again, and five were foolish. They just had a baptism of the Holy Spirit, but not actual new birth. Okay, they're going to have to go through the tribulation period, but we go up before that time, okay? So, but of course, we're going to be tested before we leave here, but we're not going through the tribulation period. I mean, and by the way, the trials that we're going to endure are going to pale in comparison. That's what the Bible calls, you know, what we go through, light afflictions, okay? So... What happens when you have a new birth? For now on, you live for, for God, okay? And when you get offline, when you get off the right track or get off course or sidetracked or whatever, off the, the you know, the straight and narrow road, God is going to, you know, rank the Holy Spirit is going to convict you and put you in. You know, sometimes he rebukes you, but if you don't listen, you know, God is going to eventually chastise you, but it's not meant to punish necessarily, but to correct you because the Heavenly Father is correcting us because God had to severely chastise me for some things. I know there's people out there in the world especially demon incarnates, they don't have this, they don't get conviction. I mean, there's some, but, you know, not to the level of God's people. So that way, when they face God on judgment day, they'll be without excuse. They can't say they weren't warned or whatever. But if you truly belong to God, because the Bible says, this is in the word of God, this is in your Bible. The Bible says, many as I love, it means God doesn't love everybody. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Okay, because sometimes at some point your son probably told you, said, Mom, uh, you know, the other kids are getting away with this or that, the other dad, or told your husband, Dad, you know, they, 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 you, you know, this, these, I'm at a sentence uh, to 55 minutes, but anyhow, so, but Mom, Dad, you, 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 the other kids, you know, they, they, they parents don't get on them about doing this or that or the other. But, and the thing you're going to tell them, if he hasn't told you that yet, he probably will at some point, you know, but anyhow, he said, but mom or dad, either you don't, these other kids do that and they're not punished. And the thing you want to tell them is you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're my child, okay? They're not my children, you are. And it's the same way in the kingdom of heaven. It's the same way with the kingdom of God, okay? You know, with being saved and stuff. God, you know, sometimes I get in my feelings and say, Lord, it's not fair that the world can get, this is my flesh talking, this isn't, you know, this isn't God or Nothing like this is just me. It's not that old flesh, you know, just rears its ugly head. And by the way, you're never going to get that right. No matter how long you serve God, we're going to always have problems with our flesh for as long as we live, okay? But the thing is, we're just down here to one of the one of the aspects of the will of God is overcoming the world of flesh and the devil. We got to take up our cross and deny this flesh, okay, and follow Christ, okay? We got to deny the desires of the flesh. So when we, when we get to heaven, God is going to, Give us far more than what we could ever dream of. It's going to be far beyond anything, any pleasure, cheap, temporary pleasures that are, that the devil offers us on a silver platter down here. But anyways, the, the, the thing is, you're going to tell your son, you or your husband, and or your husband going to tell your son is, you're my child. It's not my job to straighten them out because they're not my children. And I do get in my feelings sometimes and don't think it's fair, but 
I have to tamp that down and remind myself that one of these days when we're in, and, and yes, now we as God's people, we feel like the devil's crowd, the Nephilim, the terrors get away with murder or whatever you want to call them, get away with murder. But one of these days when you're in heaven and the marriage supper of the lamb, the wedding feast of the, the, the bridegroom and you're looking down on this God, you know, allows you a few sneak peeks down on this earth. You know, it was tribulation breaks down and you see how bad the sinners, the ones that got left behind are suffering. You're going to be you're going to be on your knees or, or running around shouting and screaming and praising and yelling and, and praising God and and, uh, um, and hollering and stuff and, and praising God, screaming, shouting, yelling and hollering and praising God that, you know, he did straighten us out while we was on the earth. OK, you, you know, and we're now we're up in heaven and we never had to struggle anymore. OK, and look how bad he's suffering as opposed to how well we're doing in heaven. OK, so I constantly this is what happens when we're tempted by the flesh. The best thing to do, like Jesus was, is to stand when he's especially when he was in when he was out in the wilderness being tempted for 40 days and nights. OK, or uh, uh, six weeks out there in the in the desert, in the wilderness, being tempted by the enemy. OK, by the devil or Satan. Basically, I like call the enemy to abbreviate it. But anyhow. Or a smoother flow of semantics. So, so when he was out there, why did he do? He 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 stood on the word. He kept saying, "It is written. It is written. It is written." And he kept throwing the, the, the word of God, which the Bible says is a, is a or the scriptures, the Canaan of scriptures, which is a two edged sword. He kept throwing it at Satan, and that's how he overcame. So, in the case where you're tempted to think that God is being too hard on you, or He's not being fair, okay. First of all, you know God deals with the tears, deals with wheat and tears differently, okay. We is the wheat. We're the wheat, okay? We're part. Of, we're ears of wheat. We're part of bushels of wheat. So God, when we get off the track, we, we, when we get to messing up down here, is God the Holy Spirit's job to straighten us and convict us and stuff like that and rebuke and even chastise us, okay? The devil. That's not happening to the devil's crowd. That's not happening to Satan's people because you know they don't belong to God. They're already on their way to destruction. They already they lost. They gone in the head. They curse with a curse, and they already destroyed. Mentally, emotionally, morally, and spiritually. So God is not dealing with them. God don't deal with the sinners the same way he does the saints and vice versa. Okay? So, one of these days when you're in heaven, you're going to be glad that, you know, God was, you know, hard on us because, you know, we're never going to have to struggle anymore. But on the other hand, we, we have a bright future, Sister Rachel. I mean, we, and you can you can get this to your husband to listen to as well, and even your son, you know, if he's old enough to understand these when. If and when he's old enough to understand these things, even to other believers, you can share it. It doesn't. It doesn't matter to me because when other saints, I'm gonna be honest about my YouTube ch channel. When I when I find videos by other saints that are very true, I also check out si a sister. Uh, you know, she she went. She been dead for about nine years now. Yes, almost nine years. She, she passed on in May of 2015. By the way, check out her messages. Her name is Claire and Duna Tongo, and she's from uh, uh Cameroon. Okay, she she's that woman was she was she was delivered from a life of prostitution and it's like she became a totally as she got that new birth that I was telling you about earlier, she became a totally different person. Okay. She went from dressing like a, a harlot to having entire heart wearing false eyelashes and false hair and bleaching her skin and stuff. She went from that to being a modest and cloak. And no, you don't have to dress frumpy because you you African ladies, I'm I'm gonna be honest with y'all, y'all got Modest apparel now. It's just like an art for y'all. It's like an art form, okay? Y'all have it. Y'all have it down to art. Y'all can dress modestly but look fashionable and beautiful at the same time. Wear beautiful clothes. Us American women, we haven't quite, we haven't quite, you know, mastered that. But you African ladies, y'all, y'all got it down, boy. Y'all got it on lock, as we like to say here in America. You and you're, you're one of the examples. Another was was Claire. She wore nice clothes, but they were very modest. They covered up everything. They even thought that she was a Muslim. Her and a few sisters, and she tried to say, y'all Muslim? She said, no, we just address it. We're just true believers, and we believe in covering our bodies up and stuff. But anyways, we're going to judge this Jezebel world. And by the way, the great white throne judgment, we're going to be there at the Bible. That's in your Bible. It's in the book of Revelations. Just, just look it up about the great white throne judgment, okay? We're going to be there in judgment. We're going to judge the people that did us wrong, that did us evil, and stuff like that. I'm going to have to cut this short because I'm going to have to extend this to an hour. Okay, but moving forward, we we're gonna judge this Jezebel world. We're gonna tell them, and, and the people are gonna be without an excuse. They are gonna get up on that day and say, "Well, uh, Lord, I couldn't live right. Everybody was doing this or that, or the other." There's gonna be bride members that are gonna say, "I was alive back when you was on the earth. 
to whom it may apply, of course. I was a lie. I didn't cut my hair. I didn't cut my hair like a tomboy. I didn't I didn't go around wearing mini skirts or tight pants or pants, period. And there's two reasons why women wearing pants are wrong. Number one, it shows off their curves. And number two, as you very well know, in the book of, I think it was Leviticus or Deuteronomy, I don't quite remember right now. But anyways, you, you're familiar with this. The Bible says abomination. And I let pastor preach hard on this, by the way. And other pastors, they are brothers and sisters, they are brothers in Christ. Like, and be sure to check out Jack Howes. You're not sex in many skirts, by the way. And he preached these sermons, by the way, back in the 1970s. Okay, so be sure to check out Uni 6 by Jack Howes. I have to give you the link to the description. The link in the description. He talked about how, you know, wearing pants is wrong because it's men's clothes. It's immodest. And the Bible says it's an abomination for a woman to wear any kind of clothing that pertains to a man. And in the book of Revelations, it says that the abominable people are going to split hell wide open. Okay, so these women get out here wearing these pants and they got nerve to get mad at you when you say that it's a sin. Okay, but... They're okay with, with women wearing pants. It's amazing. And people are hypocrites. Christians, especially pagan, heathen Christians, or phony Christians out here are hypocrites. They say it's wrong for a man to wear a dress. They'll condemn a man wearing a dress, but they don't see anything wrong with a woman wearing pants. But according to the Bible, God is going to judge the whoremongers. I would say adulterers or whoremongers are going to be judged. But like William Branham has said, even though a woman may be ever so true to her husband, or she never stepped out on him or anything, or whatever, if she she goes around dressing like a slut, okay, or a harlot, or a whore, or whatever, she goes around wearing all that mist that make me and lust stop of her, you know, she gonna be guilty on judgment day of adultery, and also if she cuts her hair off like a man, okay, with these butch haircuts like some butch, and by the way, women that do stuff like they have a lesbian spirit on them, okay, they're saying basically when they wear pants and cut their hair off like men, that, you know, they're, they're down with the LGBT community, they're a lesbian, they, they technically a lesbian, and on judgment day, they're going to be guilty of adultery and lesbianism. He said, but uh, I was straight. I never wanted another woman. I never even been with another woman in my life. And God said, sorry, it doesn't matter. R law rules are rules, okay? And, and there's going to be women up there on that day with their long dresses, like my late pastor said, their plain faces and their long hair, okay? They're gonna, we're going to judge this Jezebel world. And the Bible says, the book of Revelations, and judgment was given unto them. So, and in another version of the Bible, I think... I don't remember which one. It might have been the, the New International Version. I don't recommend those other Bible versions because they're watered down, by the way. But another version of the Bible says we're going to be given, we as the bride of Jesus Christ, as we were part of his body and his bride, we're going to, we're, we're going to judge this world. We're going, to be, we're, we're going to be given the authority to judge, basically. As that version of the Bible says, we're going to be given the authority to judge. I mean, Jesus Christ is going to let us judge the people directly. We're going to deal with these people that persecuted us and made fun, mocked and made fun of us because we, we chose to do the will of God. We sold out. We were sold out to the kingdom of heaven. And by the way, the Bible says, now we have eternal life. Now the kingdom of God is within us. I mean, yeah, we go, we see Jesus face to face later on, and we literally go to heaven and see it in person. But now, here on earth, the kingdom of God is within us. We're in the world, but we're not of it, okay? So people are going to get up on that day and say, I couldn't live right. And the bride of Christ is going to say, I, we live right. Okay, we were persecuted. We lost our jobs and stuff like that. And we, our freedom, even our lives. But we stay, we, we stay faithful until the end. Okay, and by the way, that's one of the most misquoted scriptures in the Bible is enduring to the end. And saying shall be saved. So how are we going to, we as the bride of Christ, the smarter body slash bride of Jesus Christ, be had to, how, how does that apply to us when God just mandates for us to be faithful until the end? The, the 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 part saying endure to the end that applies to the foolish virgins and the tri and tribulation saints. They gonna have to work to get, but with for their salvation. We is on the other hand that really belong to God. We we only have to we we are uh, we have to be faithful until the end. Okay, salvation is given to us by works. I mean, I'm sorry, not by works. My bad, by grace. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, anyways. Uh, we, we're to, the Bible says, as we as the saints, we're to be, the Bible says, the rightly divided word for us the foremost, because certain scriptures apply to certain individuals, but others apply to other individuals. There, there's scriptures that apply to the saints, and there's scriptures that apply to sinners, okay? So, uh, anyways, um, we call, we as the saints, we're called to be faithful until the end, okay? So why, if you're not, well, you're just gonna lose your reward. You won't go to hell, but, you know, you're gonna lose your rewards, okay? You'll make heaven, but, you, you know, you're going to fall short and you're going to be regretful because you didn't sell out to God. I'm going to have to extend this another five minutes.
And by the way, the judgment seat of Christ is for, it's not determined whether you are, whether you uh, uh, go to heaven or hell because ain't no, no sinners going to tarry in God's sight, okay? We we're already there. But the thing is, you're going to, like, like, I heard one pastor say, I almost called his name, uh, you're going to be, when you reach the judgment seat of Christ, because he's a false teacher, that's why I don't want to mention his name, but when we go to the judgment seat of Christ, you know, you're going to be judged between the gap that exists between where you are and where you could have been had you done everything God told you to do in your life while you were serving God on earth. Like for some believers, that gap is going to be 80% and some is going to be 50%. So some, I'm going to just say some is different. It's, it's going to vary among true believers. Some are going to have, and some is just going to be only 10%, okay? But, you know, some believers are going to get more rewards than others, okay? Because it's not going to be a commie, communistic, socialistic, egalitarianistic thing where everybody gets the same amount of rewards when they get to heaven. Okay, you're going to still make heaven, but, you know, you're going to cry tears of regret. You ever heard of that phrase, tears in heaven? Yes, there are going to be tears of sadness in heaven. You say, oh, heaven is perfect. But see, the thing is, you know, there's going to be tears because a lot of saints didn't do everything they were supposed to do. They don't go to hell. They just, God's just going to chastise them, and they're going to feel sad because in the form of sadness and depression. I wouldn't say depression. I'm going to just say, I'm not saying they're not going to be happy. They're not going to be as happy as the other saints that really did sell out to God, okay? And they're going to have to spend, you know, uh, <coughs> a portion of the moon. <coughs> and they're going to have to spend a portion of the millennial reign. You know, that's what the millennial reign is for. Yeah, we in heaven, but the millennial reign is actually a, just a period of time before um, before we judge the, the evil, wicked world at the great white throne judgment. You know, it's a period of time uh, 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 where, you know, we correct the mistakes that we made on earth. And what I would suggest is the, the more you get done, the more tests that you pass down here, the less... And, and, and you, the more you get right down here, the less you have to correct when you get over there, okay? And the sooner it'll be for you to get down to the full, sooner it'll be before you get down to the full business and join all of the, the premium benefits of being in heaven, of being a, a, a citizen in heaven. But anyways, didn't mean to be extra long, but got to obey the Lord, but you understand that. But anyhow, so like in modest apparel, as I was saying earlier, you know, it's two reasons that's wrong for women to wear pants, because pants are for men, first of all. Second of all, pants are very revealing of a woman's flesh, okay? Because women have curves that men, they say that the women, we've been brainwashed to think of women, that men aren't supposed to wear tight clothes, and women are, but aren't. Ours, women can wear tight clothes, but it's not true. It's another lie that the devil is sold to the masses, okay? <coughs> but anyways, uh, they go get up on Judgment Day and say, you know, I never stepped out on my husband. I never was a lesbian, but God said, you know, you were when you cut your hair short and wore men, wore pants. And by the way, pants are a sign of the feminist movement, LGBT, pagan, you not sex movement as well. But uh, anyways, I got the, I mean, I know uh, the devil don't like this, but I got to obey God. I mean, I, you can't go on disobeying God because you get in trouble. But nevertheless, the Bible said a woman is not supposed to cut her hair because if you're going to cut it, you might as well shave it bald headed. Why they do in the Old Testament when a woman was caught in prostitution? They shaved her head bald to show everybody what she was. They didn't put a bunch of tattoos on her or whatever. They would shave her head bald headed. So if you're a woman, you cut your hair then, like especially like these butch haircuts that lesbians and men, men folk have, you you going to be, a man has a right to divorce a woman that does that because I know this modern Jezebel liberal society, you know, God hating Christ rejecting a uh, sin, love and pleasure seeking world would laugh at such a thing. But a man has a right to divorce a dishonorable woman. OK, and by the way, when women cut their hair like that, it's not even cute. It diminishes if they're beautiful. It diminishes their beauty and makes them like tomboys. OK, because God intended for if you're a woman. You need to be a woman. If you're a man, be a man. OK, stop trying to, you know, uh, and, and, you know, uh, and also, it's wrong for men to wear earrings because that's a homosexual spirit, okay? So, uh, we've been duped about a lot of things because the Bible says, according to the Word of God, the Canaan of Scriptures, uh, the, Satan has deceived the whole world. And back to Sister Musa, I think when she first came on the air about four years ago, she was a real person because she's very different and she's very robotic and she even looks a bit mannish now, okay? And she used to be just, uh, I think she's in hell now, to be honest, okay? I mean, she's she's living proof. And I even had somebody in my family that was like, they feel filled with the Holy Spirit, but they still got their soul snatched and taken hell. I believe the actual sister is I'm talking about as far as her soul is concerned. I'm not talking about that physical body because it's been taken over by demons. And that's when, you know, she started preaching all this harem, scaring, false doctrine and stuff like that. And, you know, since this thing is growing short, 
I'm going to have to continue this another time. And I hope you were blessed by this. I hope you learned something new. And, you know, you, you, you feel free to email me back or respond me back. I know you're a busy lady, but you have anything, questions or comments or whatever, you can get in touch with me. So if there's nothing further, I'm out. Peace, shalom, and be blessed as we on our way to heaven.